plant hardiness zones. Do you know what they are? Do you know what yours is? Well, stick around because today I'm going to tell you all about them. Come on, let's go. Hey, how you doing today? I'm Rick Bickling. Welcome to the How Do Gardener, where we give you expert gardening advice to help you plant successfully, grow organically, and live your best gardening life. Today, we're going to take a deep dive into plant hardiness zones. You know, although the recommended plant hardiness zone is an extremely valuable tool in determining whether a given plant is going to grow and thrive in your yard, there are several other environmental factors that need to be taken into consideration. And really, they vary plant to plant. So before we dig into the plant hardiness zone, let's take a look at these other factors. Length of day. That's usually the, one of the most critical factors in regulating vegetative growth, flower initiation and development, induction of dormancy. Plants survive only when the length of day promotes growth and prepares them for seasonal changes. Amount of sunlight. Most plants respond best to a certain amount of sunlight each day. Full sun, light shade, partial shade, full shade or dense shade. Be sure to check out my video up here. It'll give you a detailed look at the different amounts of sunlight, how you determine what they are and how to determine what parts of the yard receive certain amounts of light. Heat. Plants vary widely in the amount of heat that they can survive in. And by tradition, we clump in the amount of heat that a plant can survive in along with the amount of sunlight it receives. Temperatures. Plants grow best within an optimum range of temperatures, and that range may be wide for some species and very narrow for others. But basically, plants can only survive when the temperatures allow whatever species they are to metabolize. Frost. Plants vary greatly in their reaction to frost, from immediate death to really surviving and thriving due to the frost. So it's really important to know what your first and last frost dates are for your area. Watering requirements. Gardeners need to know how much rainfall a given plant requires in order to grow and thrive. And if you don't receive that much rainfall in your area, how much additional watering you're going to have to provide and how often. Soil pH. The ability of a plant's roots to absorb water and in turn the nutrients in the water is greatly determined by the pH of the soil. pH is a measurement on the scale of acidity and alkalinity of the soil. The successful culture of all plant species require that they be grown in a medium within a definite pH range and with from 10 to 14 essential nutrients in the appropriate balance. Although plants may tolerate some extraneous elements and compounds, every plant species and cultivar has well-prescribed limits. All right, so what is a plant hardiness zone? Well, on January 25th, 2012, the United States Department of Agriculture, or USDA, released its latest plant hardiness zone map. The last time it was updated before that was 1990. Plant hardiness zones are based on the lowest temperature for any given area that can be expected for that area each year. These temperatures are often referred to as the average annual minimum temperature for that area. And this temperature plays a key role in whether a given plant species will survive and thrive in that area. This new version of the map is now divided into 13 different zones, each of which represents an area of winter hardiness for plants. Each zone represents an area where the average annual minimum temperature is within a 10 degree Fahrenheit range. Each of these zones is now further divided into 5 degree Fahrenheit subzones A and B. For example, here in Austin, Texas, we're in zone 8B. Now these zones range from zone 1A with an average annual minimum temperature of from minus 60 to minus 55. Whew all the way to zone 13B, where the average annual minimum temperature is a balmy 65 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. The new maps use data collected over the 30 year period, 1976 to 2005, and after the addition of many new measurement stations and detailed reviews by horticultural experts for their specific geographic regions, many zone boundaries have shifted compared to the previous map. Now you saw earlier, I kind of flashed up the general map for the United States now it's kind of silly to try to look at that and pinpoint exactly which zone you're in. So what I've done is in the comments down below, I've pinned a link for each state to an interactive map for that state. So you can go to your state, zoom in, and get a pretty good idea of exactly which zone you're in. In addition to the United States, I've also got links to the plant hardiness zone maps for Australia, New Zealand, 
Canada, China, Europe, and Japan. So the plant hardiness zone is a really good measure to see if a given plant will survive in your area. But remember, there's other factors that need to be taken into consideration too. For a really great video talking about soil science and how the soil interacts with the plants for the plants to get nutrients, check out my video up here. It's pretty interesting.